Welcome back to Boat Break. In today's video, we are diving back into the past to learn all about the ancient world. Because recently, with the massive rise in popularity of, in particular, Greek myth retellings, people are just becoming more and more fascinated with the ancient world. So in this video, I have got a stack of fascinating non-fiction recommendations to teach us the strangest things we never knew about the ancient world, beyond just the Greeks. Though don't worry, we've obviously got the Greeks in here too. I'm going to start by recommending A World Beneath the Sands, by Toby Wilkinson. Toby Wilkinson is one of the leading experts in Egyptology, which is the study of ancient Egypt. And Egyptology has a fascinating history of its own. So there have been two pretty major breakthroughs. In 1822, a scholar called Jean-Francois Champollion, sorry about my terrible attempt to pronounce his French surname there, became the first scholar to decipher hieroglyphics. And he was a very interesting man himself. He apparently preferred to work completely alone, saying he needed absolute silence in order to hear the voice of history. He also insisted on drinking water from the Nile, which was far from safe, but I guess there must have been something in the water because he did make this incredible breakthrough which allowed us to learn so much from these ancient writings. For what it's worth, the author Toby Wilkinson can also read hieroglyphics, which is very impressive. And then 100 years after that, the second major breakthrough was of course the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb and all of the thousands of objects buried inside it. So this book, takes us on a journey with these scholars and archaeologists who were so devoted to discovering the secrets beneath the sands of Egypt. So it's a really fascinating angle for this book that we get to see how they made these huge breakthroughs and the race for information as well as actually learning so much about ancient Egypt. And from the size of this book you can tell this is packed with information. I promised you I wouldn't leave off the Greeks so next I'm going to recommend Pandora's Jar by Natalie Haynes. And Natalie Haynes has herself become so beloved for her brilliant female-centered Greek myth retellings. So A Thousand Ships is her retelling of the Trojan War and Children of Jocasta is her retelling of the story of Antigone. But this is her non-fiction book which is exploring all the ways women are portrayed in Greek myths. So we have chapters dedicated to Helen of Troy, to Medusa, to Penelope. It's absolutely fascinating and will totally make you rethink the way you see these women in these myths. And while we're talking about the Greeks, I've got two books here by Paul Cartledge about Greek cities. So there is Thebes, the Forgotten City, which is where Oedipus was born, it's where Heracles was born, but as it was so close to Athens, and for a long time was its active enemy, it was never given the same legendary status. But in this book, Paul Cartledge argues that Thebes is every bit as fascinating a city as Athens. And I'll give you one little tidbit. So allegedly the first inhabitants of Thebes sprung up from the ground where they had been planted in the form of dragon's teeth. And then another Greek city that Paul Cartledge wrote about, he wrote this book on the Spartans. So Sparta had a very, very different culture to Athens, where Athens promoted individualism, culture, society, democracy. Sparta was all about totalitarianism, the military, repression and segregation. And this book looks at that history, but also about the legacy of that history on the British Empire. The next book I want to recommend is Black and British by David Olasoga, and I've got here the adult version as well as the version for younger readers as well. So this is a very full history of Britain, all the way from Roman Britain through to present day. So really I recommend reading these entire books to totally redefine your understanding of British history. But as we are talking specifically about the ancient world in this video, there is a lot in here on Roman Britain and on black Britons living during that time. David Olasoga has talked about how when he was growing up he would often hear that incredibly racist refrain of go back where you came from, which is not only offensive but very ignorant and relies on a complete erasure of black people from British history. So this book is a complete rebuttal of that. And this version aimed at younger readers is filled with maps and illustrations as well. There's also an essay collection called Black Women in Antiquity, edited by Ivan Van Sertima, which is a collection of essays all about the role of black women in history and mythology. And it particularly focuses on women from Egypt and Ethiopia, and looks at their influence on European culture and religion as well. Now the art historians among you will love my next recommendation, Mesopotamia by Zainab Barani. So Mesopotamia was an ancient area that roughly corresponds now to modern Iraq, a bit of Syria and a bit of Turkey. 
And this book is all about the art and architecture of Mesopotamia, charted all the way from around 8000 BCE up to around 600 BCE, filled with maps and time charts to take you through the many civilizations that thrived in that area over those thousands of years. And as I said, art historians will absolutely love this one because Barani uses her analysis of the art that has survived from that time period to tell such an amazing story of the development of human thought and human culture. Another part of the world that I never learnt about in ancient history is Australia. So my next book recommendation is Deep Time Dreaming, Uncovering Ancient Australia by Billy Griffiths. So this book looks at two parallel histories. More recently, it looks at the reassertion of Aboriginal identity in the second half of the 20th century, but it also digs further back into the past to uncover Australia's ancient history. And the more that is discovered about that past, the more is understood in the present about what was lost, and it really makes sense of modern indigenous politics, for example. Next, a fun one, Apocalypse by Amos Nair and Dawn Burgess. So Amos Nair is actually a rock physicist, in fact, one of the world's leading rock physicists. And in this book, he applies his extensive knowledge of earthquakes to the Greek myths and comes up with new theories for what actually might have caused some of the real events behind the stories. So what if, for example, Troy wasn't destroyed by the ancient battle that we read about in the Iliad, but was destroyed by an earthquake so catastrophic that people at the time could only interpret it as an act of God? And Amos Nair looks at so many different myths and also some of the world's most famous archaeological sites and presents really compelling evidence for earthquakes. And then finally, combining books with food is my favourite activity, so the last book on my list is Food in the Ancient World by John M. Wilkins and Sean Hill. This book investigates an entire millennium of food consumption, so starting from around 750 BCE going through to around 250 CE, and looks at food and how it was linked to morality and the pivotal role that it played in society, as well as analysing the use of food in ancient literature. So a really niche topic that I never knew I needed, but I so did. If you enjoyed this video, I will link a whole playlist here of all of our book recommendations about the ancient world. We would love to hear from you as well, so do leave any of your own favourite book recommendations in the comments. And do hit that subscribe button below, and we will see you next time.